Okay, we're going to go ahead and start because we have 44 slides. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, what, you said three minutes a slide? Don't worry, no, you'll make it by the Pantheon party. Uh, you know, this is a very tough slot. You're right in, you're, you're the last session before the parties. Not a good place to be. People want to go to the parties. So, um, my name is Greg Marshall. I'm a solutions architect at HCL. I've been on Drupal.org since 2006 and attended my very first DrupalCon in 2010, which is when I decided to get serious about becoming a developer. Before that, I was just simply a user site builder. Um, I happen to have all of the Oculus certifications, so I'm a grandmaster for Drupal 7, Drupal 8. And I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Mastering Drupal 8 Views. I'm Amanda. I'm a site builder at Colorado Interactive. We do all the Colorado.gov sites, about 250 right now. Um, I'm also a Drupal Easy Academy graduate, Mike. And I've actually had a Drupal.org profile since 2008, but I didn't really get involved in Drupal until um, 2016 and went to my first DrupalCon in Baltimore. And you're a certified site builder. So, yeah. Okay, so we have a disclaimer. Basically, we both work for public corporations, and we're here being us, not the companies we, we work for, so, you know, read the legal stuff later. Um, who here does not have a Drupal.org account? Oh, good, I don't have to do that. I was going to tell you, do not pass go, do not collect $200, <laughs> and proceed immediately to opening up your phone, your computer, anything you have, and get your account now, because you want to start the time. So the other day I was talking to my co-worker, Alfredo, and the topic of our Drupal.org profiles came up. I know you helped me set mine up when I first got active after the Academy, um, but I wasn't really sure how important it is. What should I tell him about his profile? Well, your profile, your Drupal.org profile and your LinkedIn profile really, in many respects, represent your online resume. And so hiring managers will check them out. People evaluating modules will check your, your profile out. There's a lot of reasons why. And even though you might not give them the URL to your Drupal.org profile, if you Google Drupal plus your name, in that first page, there's about a 95% probability that your Drupal.org profile will show up. So the people are going to be able to look at, at it anyways. And let's, let's talk about a couple of examples. I already sort of mentioned the, the, the fact that when people are evaluating modules, they're going to look at your profile to see what kind of, of contributor you are within the community. But just as importantly, I've been involved in hiring quite a bit. And over the years, I've always asked for people Drupal.org profile to see whether they're, they're participating in the community. And if you had two equivalent resumes, and you brought up their profiles. Now these are basically equivalent people. They're both talented back-end developers. The one on the left I happen to work with, he's down in Costa Rica. Um, the one on the right I just happen to know. But these are two equivalent things. What do you think a typical hiring manager is going to do? And at the same time, and, and it's funny because one of my coworkers from Accenture when I was there, when I interviewed at Accenture, my interview started off with my technical interview and saying, I'm not going to ask you about Drupal, I already know you know it. And we went on to talk for an hour and a half about other things. But it was, it was a very interesting, that's when it really clicked on me that, that you're Drupal.org. Now I know Alfredo's not looking for a job, and I certainly hope he's not looking for a job, but if you're part of a team and you're out pitching business, and a client decides to check out who are going to be the developers working on my site, which one would you like to see? A, a, a group of profiles like this, and this is actually three out of five developers who put together a project very much similar to what you and your team did in a year, but they did it in 12 weeks. So it's a site factory implementation. Or would you like to have this team, which is I consider the dream team of Drupal, it's Dries and two of what I consider to be some of the better known um, community members that are, that are very, very sharp programmers. So this is the idea that you want to have a profile that you can be proud of. All right, you've sold me. I'll talk to Alfredo tomorrow. Can I show him your profile? Sure. So mine looks like this because it's long enough I had to make it tiny. You can't read it. It really doesn't matter, but it, it shows you the general structure. One thing I want to do is we're going along. We're going to talk about a bunch of different fields and forms, and they show up in the standard Drupal layout left sidebar, content area, right sidebar. So we numbered them one, two, and three. As we go through, 
will show you where all the various things happen. And this is Alfredo's profile before we started. It's actually better than many, but not as good as it could be. So why don't you go ahead and, and start with the basics and review options. Well, the first part of the profile is pretty obvious. Just standard Drupal username, password, email address. Next is a checkbox for whether the account is shared. For shared accounts, there's, they're usually organizations and they allow several users to edit the information. Uh, there's a checkbox for a contact form with which, with, if you check, people on, can talk, contact you um, via Drupal.org. And then next on the page are the various communications you can get signed up for. Um, I signed up for pretty much everything and I get maybe one email a week, so if in in doubt, I would just sign up for it and you can always change your mind later. Next is the personal information tab. First and last name, pretty obvious. Um, you can also, there's also the option to set your pronouns, which is a new option since I created my profile. Um, I know it's part of the in diversity and inclusion initiative that I heard about in DrupalCon Baltimore. I added she, her to my profile. Alfredo added he, him, but I know that yours is blank. Uh, the next set of checks marks are another part of the diversity and inclusion program. They don't change what's displayed on your profile, but they do let the Drupal Association do a more detailed analysis of the diversity in the community. So I'd encourage everybody to um, fill that part out. The, the next part is the bio field, and it looks very in, innocuous and very small on the form. Fortunately, it's a standard Drupal draggable field, so you can go ahead and expand it. And when you do that, this is what mine looks like. You, this is really the chance you get to put almost anything you want on your Drupal.org profile, including your favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. So make sure you, you get a good recipe. Um, the first paragraph I always, and mine I, I have, it's the same little short bio of myself that I use whenever I'm registering for a camp or a con or anything. I just copy it off, off of the Drupal.org profile. So it's a very brief who I am and sort of a fun fact that I like to ski in June. And then I go into more detail, and then because, again, I was, the, I was one of the first people to get all of the Acquia certifications, I've listed them all here. But just as importantly, notice that there's HTML in this field. So you can use HTML, and if you click on the more information about text formats, you'll see that there are a lot of HTML tags available to you to do your formatting, and I encourage you to take advantage of them and make your profile a little bit easier to read and a little bit easier to navigate. And technically, you can have images on the, on your, in this field. The one limitation is that image has to be on Drupal.org. So one way of getting around this is to file an issue on maybe a module you already maintain, upload your image as part of that module or that issue, and then immediately close the issue. The image stays on the site, and you have access to something you can put on it. I would encourage you that maybe that's not the best approach, but it works. Um, following that are some, some fields for general websites that you want. So the first one I have on my profile is my company website, which has been in the middle of being refactored for the last five or six years, probably will be for another five or six. You know, typical shoemaker's children. And then a link directly to my book, since I want people to buy the book someday. Um, then you have social links, and for me, I, I decided that LinkedIn and Twitter were the two, even though I don't tweet very often, um, those were the two things because I don't generally use Facebook in a, in a business environment. So those are, those are things, and you can reorder them by dragging and dropping and, and getting it just exactly the way you want it. And then the last part of this tab is your photo. And I use a standard formal photo I had taken when I started at Accenture, um, I recommend a formal photo, personally, because I think this is your online resume. You want to be as formal as you want. You can be informal. You can have a picture of your dog. If you aren't comfortable having a picture of you, put an avatar or, or it, really anything, an icon. If you notice, Alfredo used his, his Acquia certification badge. Um, but whatever you do, you do not want the gray, shadowy figure that Drupal defaults to. That shows that you just didn't care enough to even bother uploading something. So at least change that to something, anything. We don't, I don't really care. The next tab is the language and location tab, which is pretty straightforward. I picked the time zone we live in, Denver, the country, United States, and we filled out the location as Aurora, Denver, Colorado. If you don't fill out the location, 
the country will display, but if you do fill it out, that will display. We picked a language for Drupal.org to communicate with Alfredo and his primary language, both English, and we selected English as a language spoken, but since he can also speak Spanish, just held down the control key and uh, selected Spanish as well. The next thing you have is, is, is the table labeled Drupal, and that's your Drupal involvement. So the first part are a series of checkboxes for how you contribute to the project. Um, they've been the same checkboxes for as long as I can remember mostly. So we give support on IRC. I haven't seen anyone on IRC in a long time. i certain there are still people. But um, so this is self self reporting. Pick things that you feel comfortable saying you've done. And then about a year ago, so it's relatively new to me. Uh, they added this second text field that you can enter your own Drupal contributions, either expanding on the check boxes that you've checked, or adding things that just simply don't aren't represented. So I helped organize the Colorado Drupal Camp. That was something that I, I was very proud of. I've helped organize Drupal contribution days at camps and cons um, as a mentor. Um, I've also spoken a couple of times at Drupal cons, many times at several camps, and helped organize global training days all over the world. So Albany, wherever I have a contract, I seem to convince the community there to, to go ahead and do global training days. Further down are the people who have mentored you in Drupal. You type part of their Drupal username and autocomplete will bring up the rest. Uh, these get displayed on your profile as pictures, but just like any SEO, they also link back to you from their profiles. So if you click people who list you, if you click people who list your mentor. And everybody has gotten help from somebody, so this is a great way to acknowledge and thank them. Finally, there's a long and growing list of Drupal events. Now these are typically Drupal cons. You'll notice the early events were Drupal cons because Drupal cons didn't exist then, but these were the equivalent of a Drupal con. Drupal Europe is listed here, and it looks like I need to go back and update my profile because I didn't check Amsterdam yet. So since I'm here, I think I can probably take credit for it. Um, before you add who you work for, the next tab is your work, so your work experience. This is like listing the jobs you've had on LinkedIn or on your, your job profile. But before you add it, check to see if they have an organization account on Drupal.org. If they don't, check with your leadership because you don't want to be creating duplicate accounts. But if they don't, then go ahead and create an account for your organization and upload their logo because then if you, when you come back to this place and put in the exact name that's on the, the organization profile, that logo will come over onto your profile. Otherwise, it will just show up as a company with possibly a link. So you want to do that. And the reason why I said double check with your leadership is when I joined HCL, they had three profiles. So they had three different people in different parts of the world that had decided that they should have an organization profile. So one of the things we did very early um, when I started was get them all cleaned up into a single profile. Um, after you get that done, go ahead and add them. You, again, you can drag and drop them and, and get them in the order that you want them in. The comments tab controls what part of your profile will be displayed when you create a comment. And since all issues on Drupal.org are comments, this is probably more important than you think. So there are some parts of your Drupal.org profile that are automatically generated. So you don't control them, you don't enter a form. Um, the first is how old your account is, which is why I'm so eager to have people sign up as early as they can. It's, there's nothing like having a, a nice long period of time. Um, nobody's got more than about 18 years, six months, because that's when Dries started the account. So since he's user one, I'm pretty certain no one can be older than him. Um, then you have the number of edits you've made to the documentation. Anybody who's been confirmed can edit most of the documentation. There's some of the newer documentation that's being moderated, so that has to go through a review process. But otherwise, you can edit it just like on a Wikipedia. And you should, if you see something wrong or you see something unclear, go ahead and, and click the edit button and do that. Now, this doesn't go up every time you edit. It goes like 1, 5, 10, 50, 100. So it, it doesn't happen all the time. But it will eventually catch up with, with it. And I think it's actually being done during your cron run. The next one are the credits on issues fixed in the past year. This is relatively new, and I think it's part of that expanding credit um, system that, that the Drupal um, Association's been putting in place. And so a lot of like camps, our camp uses issue credits as a way of, of 
acknowledging people who participate in the various meetings and organization and, and activities that we do in, in order to get our camp ready. And then I have a couple of core credits that actually I traced back just for fun and realized that I didn't add any code, but I had documented how to reproduce a bug that we had run into when you had multilingual paragraphs with content moderation all stacked together. And so that was a that, that ended up being how we, we did it. And then finally, I do have some projects that are going to rapidly roll off when Drupal 7 goes away, because none of them are, that, that I've actually made direct code com commits to. Um, lastly, on the right-hand side, if you or your organization work for the, or are a member of the Drupal Association, you'll get a series of badges, okay? And everyone really should be a member of Drupal Association. The reason is, that Drupal.org is maintained by the association. It's more than just the Drupal.org website. It's all of the infrastructure that makes the project possible, the GitLab, the, the testing frameworks, the localization um, servers, all those things. Very important to all of us that use Drupal that, that that function and function very well, and that's supported by the association. And the other thing is that the DrupalCons start and more or less a run maybe not logistically, but they, they, DrupalCons come from it. And if you look really carefully, you can find Amanda and I in this picture. Um, so the first level of membership is an individual membership. It's $15 a year or 15 euros, so it's not very expensive. Um, and I really believe that anyone working with Drupal should be an individual member. It's just that simple. If your organization uses Drupal, I think you should be an organization, your company should be an organization member. I actually recommend when I'm doing projects for clients that they join the association. They just saved a half a million dollars not buying AEM. They can afford a $200 or 160 euro organizational membership. Um, and so if they're doing that, they really should do that. And if your company's a member, I still recommend that you go ahead and become an individual member there's just, all of us need to do our part to help. And then finally, there's a supporting partner. And this is for companies that are willing to make a slightly bigger contribution. It's about $2,500 a year, and they didn't show what the euro equivalent is, if there is a euro equivalent. But if you're a company and you're driving reasonably significant revenue from Drupal, I really think you should be a supporting partner because you're driving reasonable revenue from Drupal and you should be doing your part to give back. And the reason why I say this is because I really don't want you to be one of these. This is a leech. So you don't want to be a leech on our, our community. Instead, what I really want you to be is the superhero that you could be by being a, a, a member of the Drupal Association. So this is what Alfredo's profile looks like after his makeover. We know there's some contributions he can be making to generate more visibility, and he's promised to work on that. Good. So what we'd like you to do is join us for the contribution opportunities on Thursday. That will also, if, if you get involved and, and contribute, those kinds of issue credits will show up on your profile, a good way to pay, you know, make your profile better. Uh, you'll see Amanda and I there as, as the greeters. And uh, please participate in, 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 in contribution day. Even if you're not a coder, there are things to do. This year we're gonna have mentored uh, contribution for both documentation and marketing which we haven't always done. We've done documentation quite a bit. And then finally, um, like all good Agiles, we run a retrospective, so we'd like you to go online and take the survey and tell us how we did with this presentation and tell the Drupal Association and, and Kuneni um, the, how the, the con went overall. So with that, because we're one minute past due, yeah, we're not doing questions. So. <laughs> If you have questions, you can talk to us afterwards or at a party. <laughs>